After spending the last 12 years visiting every country on Earth, I've met some extraordinary people, each with an inspiring story that transcends borders. From the icy resilience of Wim Hof, who believes in the healing power of the cold. Everybody should do this. To Manny Pacquiao, whose rise from poverty to boxing greatness represents the spirit of humanity. Uh, thank God for this uh, victory. People all around the world are amazing. In this 90-minute documentary, I'm going to highlight the five most unique and inspiring individuals I've met across these five countries. The adventure begins in Vietnam to meet a guy who doesn't sleep. About a year ago, I heard about a man who claims that he hasn't slept since 1962. His name is Thai Nop, and he lives somewhere in South Vietnam. Many journalists have written about him in the past, and for a while, he was somewhat of a celebrity. But then, he went silent. Ten years have gone by, and nobody has heard from him since. Do you know him? Oh, no, no, no. You don't know him? Right now, I'm on a mission to track him down and see if it's actually true that he doesn't sleep. Just arrived in Da Nang Airport. I am so excited to go meet the no sleep guy. Hui, 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 where's Hui? Oh, he's right there. How you doing? Dude, good to meet you. This is Hui. He's a friend of a friend who lives in nearby Hoi An, Vietnam's ancient port town. He is kind enough to join me for the adventure to find Mr. Nop. However, there is a little problem. Whoa. The city, this morning. What about on the road to the village? I think it's just a little bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> the four hour journey to get there was as epic as any can be. and we had some pretty cool stops along the way. Couldn't pass up the chance to see the Golden Hand Bridge on the way to the No Sleep Guy. It's right on the way. I've seen pictures of it on Google for years and uh, it's pretty cool to be up here. Just a few hours away from the epic Hands Bridge was another really special place with a bunch of ancient temples that date back 1800 years. We're here in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around. We just came across this incredible 4th century Hindu temple complex called My Son somewhere in central Vietnam. You know, I came here to go find the sleepless man, but this is absolutely outstanding. The greatest challenge is that I am alone besides my guide, and we don't know where to locate Mr. Nop. But after translating some old newspaper articles, we narrowed it down to one village and started asking the local people there if they recognized him. Printed out this flyer with his name, Thai Nop, if I said it right. And on the bottom it says, the man who doesn't sleep. I'm getting a lot of funny stares in the street, but it's all, it's all friendly. Everybody's smiling. Bang Kobe need not come. She knows him. I see now him, but she actually don't know him where is the him house. <laughs> they kind of know. They're like. Yeah. So what? What she say? Just go straight and up. I think we should buy some gift for him. Get some oranges. Yeah, dragon fruit. Yeah. Look at all the fruit we got. Yes. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. <laughs> the watermelon and oranges and dragon fruit and. Lychee. Super cheap, huh? And with that, we have some idea as to where he might be. I spoke to another local person and he told me that he lives in a blue house just outside of town. So I hopped in a motorbike and headed through the fields to find him. We made it. We found, we found the house. The picture, the picture. Xin chào. That's him. Is that him? Yeah. Yeah, we made it. Ah, <laughs> xin chào. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Mình, mình, eh? yeah. Okay. I know we kind of showed up unexpectedly, but I hope is it's okay that we spend some time with him. No, no. Yeah. 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 He said that uh, at the moment he is uh, 80 years old. 80. Yeah. But he <laughs> wants to sleep. He wants to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> what? When is the last time that you slept? Yeah, he got pain in <laughs> Yeah, he said uh, it's a long time that he didn't remember. It's pretty wild that I found him. Yeah, Mr. Nop. <laughs> nop. Hi, Nop. Here we are. Just a smiling man. <laughs> hey guys, just want to take a quick second and thank the sponsor of this video, Aerolo. If you're a traveler like me, then you know the importance of needing a working phone so you can stay connected to the world and stay safe. Aerolo is a convenient eSIM technology provider that allows you to have data in 200 countries and regions. Being trusted by more than 10 million travelers worldwide, 
Aerolo is the world's first eSIM store that gives you access to digital SIM cards. I've been personally using it for years and it's been super helpful to stay connected, like right here in Japan. It takes just a few minutes to set up and activate and boom! No more worrying about roaming costs or getting local SIM cards. By using Aerolo, I can easily call Ubers, find restaurants, post on social media, or text my friends. And the best part is that you get to keep your original phone number. If you click the link down below and use my code DREW3, then you'll get $3 off your next eSIM purchase. All right, now let's get back to the story. The big search for Mr. Nop is finally over. Can you believe that it took me three total days of travel time from Arizona to Vietnam to find him? Now I am on a mission to learn all about his life and see if it's actually true that he hasn't slept in over 60 years. You know, the fact that he hasn't slept means he's almost twice his age because he's spent more time awake than anyone else's age. So he might as well be 130. His wife was super friendly and started cutting up the fruit that we brought over. And then I learned that they are very spiritual people. Buddhism is the main religion of Vietnam. The Buddhists believe that the human life is one of suffering and that meditation, spiritual and physical labor, and good behavior are the ways to achieve enlightenment or nirvana. Many Buddhist people have these shrines in their house and pray to them several times a day. It's a beautiful sight to witness. In the evening, like what do you do? Like most, most people, they, you know, 10 o'clock, they, uh -huh. they sleep. Yeah. What are you doing between 10, 11, 12, 1? He also working in the night time, making rice wine. Rice wine. They don't wine. <laughs> oh, so he likes to drink. <laughs> Before the war, you slept. At what point did you stop sleeping? He oh, slept yeah, yeah. during the war. During the war. Yeah. And then one day he just stopped sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Do you know why you can't sleep? Ah, uh, no, chịu. No, chịu. I don't know. Tự nhiên đó là. Actually, he don't know yet. He went before. Yeah. And what did they say at the hospital? <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> Mr. Nop's wife is preparing lunch for us. It's only like 10 o'clock right now, so she's been cooking, and it smells amazing. This is the son. Yes. Nice to meet you. What do you think about him not sleeping? He feels kind of normal now. <laughs> so you, you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast slash lunch was served and I gotta say that Vietnamese food is one of the world's best. It's healthy, it's clean, and it's plentiful. Nothing like a little shot before lunch. <laughs> she make everything this, this morning. Thank you, come on. It, it, tell her that it looks amazing. So what is this? What, this is chicken? Yeah, chicken. This is a soup? So Fox soup. This is a plate of congealed cow blood and you just put it in the soup or eat it as is. More chicken, rice, and this is always gotta have some kind of dipping sauce here. <laughs> wow, this is this is a this is a feast. Mm. You're a lucky man because she's a very good cook. <laughs> He's like, I know. Alright, gonna try the Chunk of blood, you dip it in the salt and pepper? Yeah, dip it on you. Yeah, they don't do it. Okay. Yep. Little salt and pepper. The texture is kind of like rubber. It tastes kind of like blood if you have a cut and you do this. But it's uh, not as strong. It's, it's, it's good. You like it? Good for us as well. You want it? <laughs> He's gonna finish my blood. What do you think about him not sleeping? Is it true? The first time is feel long, but at the moment it's a long time. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not come out, huh? So it's it's true, it's true. Yes. He doesn't sleep. When is the last time you saw him in a, in a deep sleep? Never. No. Really? Yes. Not yet. <laughs> Do you sleep? I'm having a shot of wine, of rice wine every 30 minutes, every 20 minutes. Here, here comes another one. Yo! Yo! <laughs> it's strong. Apparently it's 40%? Yep. That's the same strength as vodka. It's strong. More than an hour went by and I was starting to get comfortable with Mr. Nope and his wife. 
I will say though, it was a bit strange that he only took three bites of food. The drinking, however, never stopped. I think Andre has to take it. I don't think you have a choice. All right, here's where things start to get interesting. Mr. Nulp keeps inviting me to visit his house, which I realize he's talking about another house, the one that he lived in during the war in the 1960s when his sleepless nights began. Okay, so that's his home? Yeah. Really? And he's still working in the, the, the rice over there. That's yeah. where he works. He and him son working over there. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful here. It's like a little pocket of green mountains, rice fields, terraces, and a house. And that's where he lives. We're gonna go there right now. This is so surreal. Just walking through this swamp. It's all wet because of the, the, the storm. So you have many jobs. You're, you're rice wine and you're a farmer. Like you're working 24-7. Yeah. He's a superhuman. <laughs> yes. Yeah, He's like, yeah, I know. Yeah. So I have a question about your sleep. When yeah. you're working, do you feel tired? Not, not too much like a uh, normal people. <laughs> what's your secret? Like, is it the tea that you drink or what's, there's some secret that you have? Yeah, yeah. They, he normally drink the tea, green tea and rice wine. <laughs> how much, how much wine do you drink in one day? Yeah. He's like, yes. <laughs> Some one bottle. Yeah, one bottle. If, if you could sleep, do you want to sleep or you prefer to stay up all night? Yeah, he wish can sleep. <laughs> can I ask him about his hand? Uh, what happened here? Yeah. Uh, American oh, war. He's pointing at yeah. American oh, war. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, this guy. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a long time ago. Yeah. Is he, it's okay? I mean, do... yeah, I think okay. Just he... walking in the like... Yeah, with the left hand. Yeah, left hand. Even though Mr. Nob dismissed my concern about his hand, I still have a feeling that there's a reason he won't open up about the Vietnam War, or as they call it out here, the American War. To summarize, this era of heartbreak is near impossible, but what you should know is that the war was fought between the communist government of North Vietnam and the anti-communist South. The allies of the North were primarily the Soviet Union and China, whereas South Vietnam was supported by the United States. I'm sure that you've seen the footage and listened to the music from the 1960s. A large portion of Americans took to the streets in protest against the US involvement in the war. In the end, around 4 million Vietnamese civilians were killed in this bloody conflict. I can't even begin to imagine what life was like for Mr. Nop not just to live through the war in his adulthood, but also to fight in it. It really makes me wonder, could PTSD have something to do with his condition? If I was awake 24-7, I would need a place to hide out like this. It's just absolutely surreal to be here. And this is the house, right here. During the war, he kind of hid out in this place and he's basically been awake since he moved into this house. And look how old it is. So I don't have a place to sleep tonight. I haven't booked any places and I assume that there were hotels around here or something. He offered that we could crash here, like in this house. So I'm gonna take him up on it. It's gonna be pretty interesting. <laughs> Tell me about this house. Like, when did you did, did you build this house with your hands, or mm -hmm. when did you move here? The first time he came here around yeah, 1945. 45? You have two houses. So why do you come to this one? At the moment, he thought that the himson still live here mm. with no wife. Himson with no wife. <laughs> no yeah, wife. yeah. And he and himson come here and stay a little bit and work in here. Night time he work in house. Just met some wine. I want to stay awake with you in the night and just talk and eat and I don't know watch TV like whatever you do at night. I wanna I wanna be there with you. Yeah. Do you want to meet the uh, rice wine tonight? Wine, rice wine. Yeah. 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 The Vietnamese wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to. Wine. If you could say any message to people in the world, what would you what would you tell them? If the government or the some fund have a, some money for him to, to make him better and he can sleep because at the moment he wants to sleep. So he wants help. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can I can send him to the hospital. If he wants to go, I, I'll, I'll pay for his hospital. Mm -hmm. So he has, he has another house. This is just one of his houses where he works and he sometimes stays, but he has another house if he stays at. He actually has another house. He has three houses. I'm confused. He keeps telling me about houses, houses. This is his working house, then he has a new house where I met him, built three months ago, and then he has another house that he stays at. I really want to know what he does in the nighttime. Like, daytime he seems normal, he's hanging out, but like, when everybody's sleeping, what has he been doing for the last 60 years? 
What's your favorite restaurant here? I will take you tonight. My treat. Does he, does he drink coffee? Do you want coffee with Shana? <laughs> Only rice wine. Never coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Never <laughs> coffee. Maybe if he drinks a lot of rice wine, he will sleep. A lot of wine. Yeah, yeah, right. When he win a lot, like a one liter or something, he sleep sleep a little bit, one hour or two hours. Okay, so I just uncovered one clue. He does sleep if he drinks a lot of wine, yeah, like lot. one liter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but it's kind of stop thinking into the head, and he sleep in one hour or two hours, then bed. At the normal. Does he know if there's any more people in the world that don't sleep? Yeah. Oh God. He don't know actually, but he did not on no one. Mr. Nop and I motorbike back into town to his favorite restaurant. Have I mentioned that the countryside here is absolutely epic? We arrived at dinner and immediately entered into a wild scene. My name. What's your name? Yeah. yeah. Ask, ask them if it's if it's true that he doesn't sleep, if they know about it. Yeah. yeah. It's true? No sleep? Yeah. Sleeping? No sleep. No sleep. Yeah. My name no. No. You? No. You don't like beer? No beer? Only he wants uh, rice wine. Rice wine. The word of the day is yo, which means cheers. Yo. Hey. Yo. 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 I hope I'm doing that at 80 years old, just downing beers. Hey, tell me about him. What do you know about him? I'm the, the guy, the man, have a the house over there and just five or six, around five, six years ago, working in the rice field at the midnight. Yeah. We're sitting here eating a communal food and he's only had like one bite, so I'm starting to get worried that he also doesn't eat. Okay. <laughs> We have arrived to house number three. It's quite different than the other two. A little more open, blue, very blue. And this is where he makes and drinks his rice wine. Oh. <laughs> it tastes like a really bad version of soju. So natural, the smell is so so strong. Huh? As the night progressed, so did the making of rice wine. Oh, we found the look at this concoction over here. This is where he cooks it. Every night. Every night. Yeah. Wow. Inside the rice, mm -hmm. the fire in here, mm -hmm. the, the water inside in it, the rice inside in it, come through this way. Oh, he puts the bottle there? Yeah. Oh, the bottle in here, <laughs> and then the rice is going to come out. <laughs> is he going to be here tonight making the rice wine? Yeah, 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 of course. Around 2 a.m. Okay. Can, can. Yeah, yeah, I would love to come. Yeah, I just need some to drink, you know? Okay, of he could drink with me. I want to see you in the nighttime. Yeah. I make sure that it is. <laughs> that happen, huh? yeah. it smells like pigs. Whoa, there's pigs, bro. This is wild. <laughs> Yo, there's pigs just out of nowhere. So he has pigs here for, for food? To eat? Yeah, to sell in the market. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. the market. I'm back at house number one. It's 8.57 p.m. And I'm gonna attempt to stay awake all night. See if it's true if he actually doesn't sleep all night. I'm tired. This is gonna be a wild night. I may or may not have fell asleep a little bit in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Just so tired, but I woke up and he was gone. So we think that he's at the his other house making rice wine. The motorbikes were locked up in the house. We couldn't find the key, so we have to walk. 30 minute walk in the rain. We found ponchos at someone's house. So we jacked them and we're gonna go bring them back. They were on the porch. As you can see, nobody is awake. Everybody's sleeping. We made it after a 30 minute walk in the rain. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> he doesn't sleep. Yeah, we found him. 
He told us we are so good to find this house. Are you tired? Mày đâu chứ mày đâu? No, no. No? No. <laughs> Everybody is sleeping. We just walked here. Nobody is awake except for you. So his rice wine factory is pretty damn impressive and he cares a lot about it. The entire thing is handmade and he's able to produce gallons and gallons of it every single night for both personal consumption and selling it in the market. Is this his secret sauce to being able to stay awake forever? <sighs> Copious amounts of rice wine and cigarettes? How much does he sell for one 10 liters? Let, let me add this. Một lít là 200 à? Hay là cả bình? Yeah, with 5 liters is 100,000 dong and 10 is 200,000 dong. How do you feel that everybody's sleeping but you're awake? I went home. Yeah. Kind of okay now because it's really long time, but it's kind of for for me or for you or something like. I'm tired, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, right. Three thirty-two. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. Uh, he brought shots. <laughs> yes, sir. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> he changed his clothes. It looks like he got pajamas on. <laughs> he ready for sleep. Ah, sleepy time. So sometimes he lays down, but he just doesn't sleep. He already try, try too much, but he, because he want to sleep, like a normal people try and close the eyes, but couldn't sleep. Still thinking in the head, in the brain. I'm tired. <laughs> You're tired? <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. Bro, I'm tired, man. <laughs> Maybe we can get some breakfast. What time do people eat breakfast here? Six. But depend on the weather. If weather is raining. Maybe seven or eight. Keeps giving me more wine. It's really, really bad. For real. Hmm? I don't why. No, it's okay. <laughs> he keeps trying to get me to sleep, but I'm trying to stay awake with him. I just witnessed him lay down and I thought he was going to close his eyes. They just remained open. And then after five minutes, he sat back up again. And then he's just sitting here on the side of the bed. Guy doesn't sleep. <laughs> Update, it is 4.41 now. My friend Hui has fallen asleep and it's just me and Mr. Nop. I don't know what he's doing now. He's making a fire. It's still raining outside. This guy doesn't stop. Doing the Asian squat. We're just chilling. We can't talk to each other, but as I always say, everybody smiles in the same language. <laughs> Somehow we can just sit here and look at each other and uh, get along. It's pretty cool. Update, it is 5.39 in the morning. The sun is coming out and uh, I made it. Clearly he made it. I actually barely made it. Uh, I, I'm so tired that I might have lost her words. <laughs> he came inside and I wondered what he was doing. <laughs> Sneakily taking more shots. You know, my life is always so go, go, go. And so it's really kind of nice to hit the brakes and just sit here and do nothing. Literally. I keep thinking to myself in my head like, what are we going to do next? The sunrise just came out. 6.15 in the morning. But the answer is <laughs> nothing. We're just going to sit here and look around. Wait. What's up, bro? I think he's talking to me about getting coffee, but I don't understand. Ask him if he wants to go to breakfast with us. We, uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, too, too early for him. <laughs> too early, he doesn't sleep. Early for breakfast for him. <laughs> bye bye. In the blink of an eye, he just left to go feed his chickens at one of his other houses. So I might go get some breakfast and uh, take a nap. I'm tired. Bye bye. And back into the rain we go. The poncho game is strong in Vietnam. It's always raining and they're always on motorbikes. 
It's amazing how early everybody wakes up and eats breakfast in Vietnam. It's like 6, 10 a.m. And there's a giant bowl of pho being prepared. Wow, look at this bowl, man. Oh, man. Oh, that is so tasty. I came here to investigate and see if it's actually true. Does he sleep or not? And my conclusion is both yes and no. He says he doesn't sleep, but I believe that he does lay down sometimes. But his body turns off, but his brain doesn't turn off. I think his brain is always going, and that is just absolutely surreal. It seems pretty clear to me that the war has had a major impact on Mr. Nup's sleepless condition, but I wonder if we will find out if this is the truth. I also think that he just doesn't need as much sleep as we do to function normally. He's out here living life, working two jobs, and he's super busy. It is obvious that two secret ingredients help keep him going, and that is rice wine and cigarettes. <laughs> and a lot of both. After spending two days with him, I'm going to assume that he smokes 70 cigarettes a day and drinks half a liter of rice wine per day. All in all, I am so happy I came out here to meet him, and this is really a story about Vietnamese hospitality. I showed up at their doorstep unannounced with nothing planned, and he and his wife welcomed me in with open arms, cooked me food, gave me a place to crash, and to show my appreciation, I gave Mr. Nolp 500 bucks that he can hopefully use to go to a hospital to get healthy. In any regard, thank you for being here and watching this story. <laughs> from Vietnam to Turkey, I tracked down the tallest human in the world who lives far away from any big cities. Hello, I am Sultan Kosan. I am tallest man in this world record 251. <laughs> Whoa. Unbelievable. Is that the biggest hand in the world? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what size? I have one I'm catching. 61. 61. <laughs> Good morning everyone. So my buddy Anil and I have driven 17 hours from Istanbul to southeastern Turkey to meet with Mr. Sultan in his hometown, which is a tiny village just outside of the ancient city of Mardin. If you guys can remember about a year ago I met the world's shortest man named Junre in the south of the Philippines, which was a really inspiring story. And I've always wondered what life is like on the other end of the spectrum. So I've heard about Mr. Sultan through Guinness World Records and we have contacted him and we're super excited to meet him and I think he's quite famous in Turkey. He was really famous and we all grow up by seeing him in the televisions, in the newspapers and everywhere. Like he's really famous in Turkey and I haven't seen him before. I'm also super excited to meet him. Awesome, so we are heading now to his village. We're gonna be spending a half day with him and I'm gonna give you a sneak peek into his life. Merhaba, good night and abla. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, welcome. So I have to ask, um, I'm really short for an American. I'm only five foot seven. So you're, you're one meter taller than me. What is it like to be that much taller than everyone else? He's saying that he's two meter 51 centimeter long and he understand what being the longest person means. What was the first point or what was the first moment where you realized that you were actually um, way taller than all of your friends? Ben o zaman küçüktüm yani. He says uh, he first realized that when he was nine years old, at that point he was always the longer and longer and longer. But the problem is he had a tumor on these sides and thought that tumor was pressurizing it creates more and more growth hormone so he was growing unlimitedly uh, till 2011 before 2011 he had three surgeries but no one was able to stop his growth but in 2011 he went to Virginia University in Washington and uh, a radiotherapy helped him to stop oh, his growth. So if he didn't get the surgery, he would keep growing until now? Abi, o ameliyatı olmasaydın daha da uzamaya devam edecek miydin? Belki. Yeah, he says, he says probably. Uh, he says the problem is not only growing, but the, all the organs were also growing and getting bigger and bigger. Mm. So when they stopped to grow, 
uh, his body, also organs uh, felt really comfortable and he's really happy. He says like, I'm super happy after 2011. <laughs> there does come some advantages from being taller than everyone else and Sultan certainly enjoys them. Avantajları yani ben boyum sayesinde Guinness World Rekorlara girdi. The first advantage is uh, he's a Guinness World Record holder. So uh, thanks to that record, he has been traveled among 127 countries. Mashallah. Mashallah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. During his travels, he was able to learn English, which he really enjoys practicing. Hello. My friend, everybody, okay, good. I am tallest man, Sultan Kosa. Uh, me, I love you, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Look at that smile. And the second advantage for him, he was able to help uh, the domestic uh, works in the houses to to clean the ceiling and changing the bulbs and hanging the curtains and everything. But being so tall is not always as fun as it seems. Sultan is faced with a number of disadvantages such as not being able to drive a car and drawing too much attention every time he's in the public eye. More so than any movie star. Uh, he says it's a bit challenging for him to walk around the cities alone. He always needs a company and his manager is always helping him in his uh, foreign travels or in Mardin or in Istanbul. He is having a, a, a bit problem if he's alone because of too much attention. People are waking him up in the night and knocking the door during the day. Mm -hmm. And he's not able to even eat a meal in the restaurant. And many people are trying to take a picture with him and everything. So it's a bit challenging for him. The extreme attention that Sultan attracts is the main reason why he chooses to live with his parents in a small village 50 kilometers away from Mardin. Everyone here knows him and he can live his life without being bothered. Abi, how do you stay busy every day? Uh, he used social media so effectively and he's making live videos and posts and stories and YouTube videos and everything. Is it hard to type on the phone? Mm -hmm. oh. like it's so small for him. Too much small. And he loved to listen to music. He has a big speaker in his house and he's always listening music, like every type of music, Arabic and Kurdish and Turkish and like English, whatever. Luckily, my friend Ano can play a traditional Turkish instrument called Balama, so he put on a show for Sultan and it was just magical. <laughs> He's sleeping. Uh, he he feels emotional. Oh, really? That's oh, why. I'm yeah. not sleeping. I am. He says he suffered a lot throughout his life. So this instrument and the song is really emotional. So whenever he hears some uh, folk song, his mind is going all the sufferings and everything. Abi. What is one message that you want to say to the world? Dünya bizim biz dünyada yaşıyoruz. Biz barış, huzur, kardeşe yaşamayı bilelim. He said uh, we have to leave this planet to our children, to our grandchildren. So keep everything clean and leave them a good world. And the most important things for him: peace, uh, friendship, and being a good human. Great. I think it's a good time to end this interview because food is being served. Abi kahvaltı geldi. Yavaştan bitirelim o zaman diyor. Abi çok teşekkürler. Biraz kamerayı yaklaştırsın. Get closer. He's asking you. Wait, 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 wait. Dur abi diyor bir saniye. Okay. 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 Bunu yapmayı çok seviyorum. <laughs> he loves to do that. What? You know what? <laughs> 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 okay, breakfast coming. 
Good English. I am hung I am hungry. I'm hungry too. Let's eat. Oh, beautiful. I really wasn't expecting to enjoy a meal with Sultan and his parents, but they kindly were preparing all of these amazing dishes during our interview. This is Turkish hospitality at its finest. Tomato, egg, honey, <laughs> cheese. Yes. Afiyet olsun. Afiyet olsun. <laughs> Afiyet olsun. This one bread. Yes. Hana, ekmek. Really bread. How did you rip that so easily? <laughs> <laughs> bread is egg as big as his hands. Try seviyorum. Kavurmayı biz He says they make the meat in the house. Cheese? Teşekkürler. I, I love cheese. Merhabalar değerli arkadaşlar. Bugün Amerika'dan misafirlerimiz gelmiş. Neresinde? Günaydın. Amerika. Amerika. You like America? Amerika seviyor musun abi? Wow. Ah. Ah. Amerika. Where? Los Angeles, California. <gülüyor> New York. Washington. <gülüyor> New York. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Have you been to Arizona? That's my home. No. Bizi davet edersin. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> I will see Arizona if you invite yeah. me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Abi, can I ask your age? Thirty-eight. We're just now leaving Sultan's house. We spent three hours with him and his family and just sharing stories and playing music and talking and just hanging out with mostly with cameras off and it was a very special experience, very emotional and touching experience. Uh, he's, he struggles a lot and uh, it's hard for him to walk as you guys could see but um, if there's one thing I learned about meeting with Sultan is that he's so incredibly gentle and friendly and kind and he's just like anyone else in the world. He just happens to be extremely tall but uh, he's just such a such a friendly guy and, and it was really out of this world experience just to kind of sit there in his house of all places. I mean, he does a lot of interviews on, on TV and in big cities and in Mardin, the nearby town, but to be at his house with his parents, with his family and making us food, it was uh, just so incredible. And I really wish him all the best and uh, hope to connect with him again. As he said, he wants to come to the US and, and be happy to show him around Arizona. Um, but just such, a, such an incredible experience out here in uh, southeastern Turkey. And uh, this is a, a day I'll never forget. Do you enjoy, Abi? I feel so good and so emotional and so honored. It's an amazing experience. And with my instrument, he got really emotional and it also, uh, like I also felt the same thing. Mm. I don't know what to say. Yeah, uh, amazing, amazing story. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Special one to make. I love you, Doktor American Hospital. <laughs> uh, he says he has serious problems in his knees so he really hopes someone a doctor in America or doctors or hospitals in America may help him about his bones or and his knees so he really needs to uh, stand up and walk and he really wants it great uh, we will if somebody watches this and they can help how can they contact you Abi diyor ki bu videoyu birisi izlerse ve gerçekten yardım etmek isterse nasıl ulaşabilirler sana diyor. Sana ulaşsınlar. Aha. Oradan da sen bana ulaşırsın. He also has a social media accounts uh, which is tagged already in the description. So maybe you can help them. Can you imagine an adult who is six and a half feet shorter than Sultan? I traveled all the way to central India to interview the world's tiniest woman. This is Jyoti. Hi. She's the world's shortest woman at 24 inches tall. <laughs> but what you don't know is that she lives the life of a Hollywood celebrity. I came all the way to her house to see what it's actually like to spend a day in her shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it is a busy morning here in Nagpur, right in the smack dab center of India. We are gonna go knock on Jodi's door and spend the day with her. I'm really excited to meet her. We've been in touch for a few months on Instagram and she seems like a very, very sweet person. So I'm here with Priya who's from Nagpur and she's so kind that it's gonna help translate. We've arrived at Joji's house. You can't miss it because there's a sign that says Joji house. Even on their car they got the Guinness World Record sticker. Hi Joji. Nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> the first thing I see in her house in the corner is this awesome little temple area. You come every day here? She's saying that uh, she uh, prays every day 
and uh, she worshipped Lord Durga. So whenever she goes out for uh, some new shoot or new event, so first thing she uh, does is she go and pray there. Jyoti has a rare form of dwarfism called a chondroplasia. It severely affects bone growth, so she will not grow any taller than her current height of 2 feet. On top of that, she only weighs 11 pounds and we are just 2 years apart in age. Behind me is her wall of fame. So all the famous people that she's met over the years, the photo of her and them on this wall. Jyoti, this room is really cool. You have so many things in here. You're too famous. Yeah. <laughs> she's, like, <laughs> she's like, I know. Her father is showing us every Guinness World Record edition. 2011. Oh, whoa. That was the first one? 2011. As a kid, I used to love these books. I met the world's tallest man, who you also met. Sultan. Sultan. Yeah, I went to his house in Turkey. It was a similar experience. Like, we just sat on the floor of his house and we had breakfast with his family. You met him? She's saying that uh, she knows him. Uh, she has met him a lot of time and they are good friends. Jody's taking me on a house tour. Let's go? Okay. You understand all English. Milk tea. Black tea? Bla no, milk tea. No. <laughs> milk tea, milk tea, milk tea. You like sugar? Yes. You want me to help you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it looks delicious. Cheers. Too hot? Yes, too hot. That's delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I, I could drink this all day long. It's so good you could open up a tea shop. <laughs> We're going upstairs. She showed me her bedroom. Cool house, Jyoti. This is cool. Everything is pink in here. You like pink? Yes. made up bedroom. Her room is really pink. And really cute. She has like all of her memorabilia here, photos. That's her cupboard. Whoa, that's her closet. All her clothes. So she's very capable of getting dressed, everything by herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can manage everything on her own in this room because everything uh, is like make. Uh, intentionally, they have made it smaller so that she can access. Hey Jyoti, congratulations on a million followers. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. She has 1 million subscribers on YouTube and they have celebrated that year in this room. Yeah, happy Mira makeup is. <laughs> oh, that's her makeup. The boss has makeup hai ya Mira. You do your makeup yourself? Do makeup. Ha, makeup me put kar le. Yeah, yeah, she does it herself. Every finger has a ring. Your jewelry is amazing. That's so cool. The heart one goes in the middle. You're very stylish. <laughs> How long does it take you to get ready every morning? <laughs> she is saying that it takes uh, almost a uh, couple of hours to get ready. I see that you have many Guinness World Records. How did the Guinness World Records change your life? Guinness World Records has come to my name. She is saying uh, like her life has changed a lot after that because she has become a famous personality and she is like very thankful to them. Jyoti, tell me about your childhood. She couldn't play like other kids because she used to get hurt very easily. She has made good friends in school. They used to carry her everywhere. They never made fun of her. They didn't like uh, make her feel like she is different from other kids or like that. They were really nice to her. While Jyoti is very independent for her size, she does need help with basic things like taking the stairs, opening doors, and getting off of chairs. However, she doesn't dwell on the negatives and prefers to look at life optimistically. We're TikToking. It's the greatest video of all time. What are your goals in life? Hollywood and Bollywood. Oh. 1.1 million. Do you like Facebook? Yes, Facebook, Instagram, on social media. Snapchat. Snapchat. We're both millennials. I forgot to mention, when Jyoti is not acting on hit TV shows, she's also a model, which is why we're heading to the shopping mall so she can get pampered. I'm ready! But we have to be careful, because when with Jyoti, the paparazzi are always lurking. Jyoti and I are cruising through Nagpur on a motorbike. You like it? Yes, I like it. Like it's so hot. Yeah, she says it's too hot. And she's right, it's super hot. It's gotta be 115 degrees out here. We rolled up to the mall here. I got it. Everyone's getting their selfies with Jyoti. She's a fan favorite. She's a doll. You want to pick her up and take her home. She's really funny and sassy. Sassy, 
tell me about it. She's cute in person. She's so sweet the in cutest, person. Cutest, the cutest, the cutest. Cutest in person. Jyoti is shopping for some new lipstick, and they have put her up on the table here so she can converse with the people selling it. <laughs> You're a fast shopper. She knows what she wants. Like two seconds in, she picks her lipstick. Next. You can pick her lipstick. Oh, shopping spree. This is fun. Shopping with Jyoti. She draws attention everywhere she goes. Everybody loves her. Jyoti, you having fun? Yeah. <laughs> we are heading to the toddler section here so she can get some clothes. It's cool to see all the Indian like attire here. The saris and the different dresses. We're going shoe shopping, but this one's too big. Too big for me too. Oh, maybe that would fit me actually. We need smaller shoes. <laughs> What do you think about Jyoti? No, she's so cute. <laughs> she's very popular here? Yeah, she's very popular. Obviously, she's a Guinness World Record holder. That's a big thing in itself. <laughs> you can try it on. <laughs> she knows what she wants. She is now shopping for some new clothes. <laughs> you want pink? Pink, orange, blue, purple. That's cute. I like that one. She's really funny because she knows exactly what she wants. And when I bring her a dress that she doesn't like, she goes, no, no like. She likes pinks and purples. Let me see if I can find one that she wants. How about this one? Jyoti, this one. Yeah. You don't like it? <laughs> Jyoti, this one. Jyoti, you like it? It's time for a little fashion show to see which dresses she likes best. Our next stop is Jyoti's favorite restaurant. It's buffet time. Oh wow. Tell me what you like. Rice? This one? Small? Like that? Here? She wants very, very small portions of everything. Ah. Finish? Okay. Indian food is so good. If you've never had it before, it's spicy, very flavorful. Tikka masala. How do you feel that people always take pictures with you? <laughs> bon appetit. Bon appetit. Very good. Tikka masala. Spicy. I like spicy, yeah. You want chili? Chili, okay. Huh? Yeah. Oh, that one? <laughs> can you eat it? Yeah, I can eat it. Can you eat it? Me or you? Hot. <laughs> Your turn. We're looking at our photos that we took together. As we are both YouTubers, we're always thinking about thumbnails for packaging our videos. We just took these ones a few hours ago and I'm already getting roasted. This is the thumbnail here. Okay, I'm deleting now. Look, delete. Oh, she deleted it. <laughs> it's gone. Oh, she got it. <laughs> she got it. Oh, fingerprints on the leg. <laughs> that was by far the best meal I've had on this two week Indian trip so far. Now Jyoti wants to get some chai, which is my favorite. So we're gonna go find it somewhere on the street. Jyoti. Too hot. <laughs> I'm so plugged into her life. Everyone's taking photos of us, so we just gotta smile for the camera. Cheers. <laughs> Your chai is better. Yes. <laughs> oh, cheers. Thank you, thank you. Danielle. Her bracelet is now my ring. And my ring is her <laughs> fits on two fingers. It's been a blast hanging out with Jody and spending a day in her life. As we're on our way back to her house, she takes me to her favorite neighborhood shop. They have a small drink for her. <laughs> and this for me. It's a big one. Alright, then we'll have some Pokemon cards. Okay, so four Pokemon cards. And two drinks. Okay. I'm so excited about these Pokemon cards. It's too heavy. <laughs> too heavy. It's crazy to be plugged into her life for just a few minutes. I mean, we go into a shop Hello. and immediately Hello. we're surrounded by so many people. Hello. Hello. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're moving. We're moving. Don't worry. For me? Oh? What about for you? There. Small piece. For you. Yeah. This is my first time in literally 25 years opening up Pokemon cards. I'm getting that nostalgia. See what you got. Oh. These are all new Pokemon names. Meowth. Oh, this is an old yeah. one. This used to be super rare back in the day. What else do you have? Milotits. No idea that one. This one's really good. Meowth. Oh, it's that feeling of opening up a pack of Pokemon cards. Every kid in the world should experience that. I will keep this forever. I just realized this Pokemon card is in Spanish. It says Dia de Pago. Gara Chucharazo. Even though she's really short, everything else about her is just like me and you. She's literally the same as any friend that I've ever had back home. She just happens to be really short. Next time you come to America, call me. I'll show you my house. Yeah. Yeah, send me a message. My, life, my wife would like to meet you. She's showing me where she is in the Guinness Book of World Records. There's you! And there's Sultan. <laughs> playing a board game that she likes. That's like, cool. Oh. That's not cheating? Why am I cheating? Oh, I need to keep it back? Oh, alright. I don't like losing. <laughs> Been playing for like 10 minutes and I haven't made one yet. Meanwhile, she's cruising over here. Yeah. It's so good. Hey, I got it. Finally. <laughs> when did you first discover that she had this condition? So they got in about this uh, situation when uh, she was three years old. So they consulted so many doctors. We can give her hormones injection, but if we give that, so only one part can grow. So that's why uh, they decided that uh, she is good as it is. Do you know if, if Joji's condition is unique? Like, is she the only one in the world that has it? I don't Jack. So they're saying she's the only uh, female who has this condition. There are so many males who have this condition, but she's the only female. Really? She's the only person uh, who is like this smart and she's smart also. She's very smart. <laughs> what is it like to be her parents? She's very famous and they got to travel so many different countries because of that and she brings happiness to their house. So they are very lucky to have her. What are some of the most difficult parts about being Jyoti's parents? They cannot let her go alone anywhere. They always have to go with her because she cannot uh, like uh, handle everything alone because other people don't know like how to handle her or stay with her only they know so this is the most difficult thing if you could say one message to everyone in the world what would you tell them life is short enjoy it <laughs> thank you Jyoti's getting ready for a night on the town she's changed her outfits like four times today so <laughs> always looking beautiful <laughs> yay <laughs> Looking polished, Jyoti is ready to party. This will be a brand new experience for both of us, exploring the nightlife in Nagpur. But I'm rolling up in style with one of India's most famous celebrities. I have to admit, I'm feeling kind of anxious. She's famous. She's quite famous. All right, we are in the elevator up to the bar. Where are we going? It's like a warehouse. Here we go. Cool. This is cool, Jyoti. Yeah. What kind of drink do you want? Are you she wants vodka. Yeah. <laughs> We're at a bar right now in Nagpur. She doesn't drink alcohol, but we're gonna get her a mocktail. She's sitting on top of my drone case. <laughs> good. Very good. It's so cool hanging out with Jody. She's the nicest person ever. And she's just like hanging out with anyone else you've ever met. She just happens to be really, really short. It's no question that Jyoti has a lot of special traits. Speaking of talent, let's head to Ghana to meet a young man whose innovation is mind-blowing. Hi everyone, my name is Kelvin and I build this car with my own two hands. Wow, man! This is so amazing! 
The story that I'm about to tell you is beyond impressive and I've never seen anything like it before in my entire life. Everybody meet Kelvin, a teenager from the outskirts of Accra, Ghana, who literally made this stunning car from scrap metal with his own bare hands. To me, this is so revolutionary and mind-blowing that I couldn't help but wonder, how does one even go about doing this? Well, it turns out that he's always been a bright kid with very high ambitions. When Kevin was a kid, he has been using this uh, empty containers for um, aeroplanes. He started with it. He has been doing this aeroplane hel helicopters. And when it flies, it flies to some stage and it will fall. So it reached a point that he wants to make this big car. Sometimes he will stay at home when it is even uh, school time. Right. Then he'll be doing it. Right. What did you think when he first drove the car and it actually works? What was your reaction? How did you feel? I was scared because car problem and things like this, no. We are not rich enough to, for him to drive a car and maybe you get any injured or you will hit somebody or something. So I, I, I'm always scared mm -hmm. for him because always I tell him he shouldn't take it out. Right. Even the first time he drove it to the school, I wasn't around. Mm -hmm. There's so many people here. How do they feel when they see his car? Are they excited or is he popular here in this town? As you can see, anytime this car comes out, other children follow the car. That's how they are. They'll be laughing. They are very happy about it. Kelvin had a dream to create a car with his own bare hands and nothing stopped him from achieving his goal. He started with the first piece a few years ago and little by little, the car came to life. Tell me about the different materials that you use. It looks like metals and stuff. Yeah, we use the normal uh, uh, material that we use to build the containers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the square pipe, one pipe, mm -hmm. uh, angle bar, the iron rods for construction, mm -hmm. yeah. and also we use the plates to do the body. This car is a combination of car and motor, okay. so uh, the motorcycle. So we have the uh, motor shocks under here that helps the car to resist the shocks and also wow. the, the hub, we get it from scraps. How much money would you say it costs to get all the material and make the car? It, it costs a lot because uh, right now I can't have it in total because I, I have been Buying it small, 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 small. Mm -hmm. Can you try to make like a, a, a guess? 8,000. That's like 100, yeah. less than $200. How long did it take you to build this car? It has taken me three years. And you did everything yourself? Yes, I did it myself and later on my friends came and joined. So uh, Kelvin and I are gonna take a spin in his amazing car that he hand built from scratch, from mostly scrap metal. I don't even know how it's gonna work, but I'm excited to get in the car. Okay, cool. Wow, that's the door handle? Whoa, that's cool. Wow. It's like a Ferrari, it opens up. We're going in. Going in the Kelvin Mobile. Hmm, the one and only Kelvin Mobile. Whoa, dude, this is so cool, man. Holy crap. Cruising around Accra in style, bro. I've never experienced anything like this before. Oh, man! 
on the main road right now, the car actually works. Like, we're driving fast. Unbelievable. I'm like so shocked right now. Do you want to keep creating or do you want to inspire other people to make cars? What's your goal? Yeah, my goal is to uh, build cars and manufacture cars in all over the world. We are on to build cars like how the white people do. <laughs> <laughs> if you could say one message to everybody in the world watching this video, what would you tell them? I want to motivate everybody who has the knowledge and the skills to build something. Sometimes when we are, build, when we are starting to do something, it's, we find it very difficult to build things like this mm -hmm. because it costs a lot. Yes. So I want to motivate every youth, anybody who wants to build something like this or who have a, a dream to make sure the dream come to pass and with that it can be successful with everybody. That was beautiful, man. I, I know from the start of his car, but when he was here and he started, I stayed with him in this hard for a long. You stayed with him? Yes. Do you like him? Yes. He's a nice person? I'm also planning to do Teretai's motor. Really? Tell me about his car. <laughs> and it's last day on the BC. He took it to the, the school. So, so that when they finish, then he'll go, he can go around it with it. Amazing. Hey. It's okay. So when you started, it was really small, and then it grew and grew and grew. And now, look, it's, a, it's like a big car now. That's really cool. So you also want to do the same thing? Yes. Really? Have you started yet? I'm now, I'm now drawing certain things I have to do. Oh, wow. Next time I come here, I will be interviewing you about your car. Yeah? <laughs> You're confused. So you are the amazing mother of Kelvin. Yes. What do you think about his car? <laughs> I'm so excited because when he started, I, I have ever thought it would reach this far. And my, my boy has done amazing things that I've ever even thought of. It's really incredible. It is, it's, it's really incredible. And he's only 18. Yes. Okay, uh, right now, uh, as we are building this project, and we are finding it very difficult to get the materials and the support to do better and more. So I'm asking everybody, I'm pleading, I'm begging everybody that anybody who has any support, maybe from the financial education and any support, maybe the garage that we can work in. As you can see, we don't have any good garage that we are working. So we need garage and also we need the support to do it and do it better. Okay. Thank you for your time, man. It's been incredible to meet you and hear your story and I wish you all the best. Thank you. From west to east, I am crossing Africa to track down an Ethiopian man who has one of the most dangerous lifestyles you will witness. There is a man in Ethiopia who spends his days feeding wild hyenas, one of the most vicious creatures on earth. I'm traveling across the world to uncover the shocking story of a fascinating human while my life is at stake. What's up, Ethiopia? I am so excited to be back for a fourth visit to my favorite country in Africa. Seriously, if there's any takeaway from this video, let it be to come here for yourself and experience the food, the hospitality, and the ancient wonders. It is as good as it gets. Right now, I'm in a historic little town called Harar, close to the border with Somalia, and sharing a lot of the same culture. This ancient walled city has incredible tales of Muslim traditions in a Christian majority country. Deanna and I are here with our new local friend and Rastafarian named Kali, who's gonna help us translate and track down the notorious hyena man. Do you know the hyena man? I'm looking for him. Building, the old building. Watch out, bro. Yeah. Some they know where he is. Some know him, some don't. Yeah. We're going to the old buildings. Do you know Abbas? Yes. What do you What do you think about him? She said he, we know him. He's doing very good job. Where does he live? Chogol. It's the old city. Oh, in the old city. More and more clues. Do you know the hyena man? Yes, yes. Hyena is our friend. Where's the hyena man? It's around the uh, Chogol uh, wall. All right, bro. I'm on my way. Thank you. Okay. After searching for clues for three hours, the only information we've managed to get is that the hyena man lives somewhere outside of the old city walls and that he feeds wild hyenas after sunset. In the meantime, I want to show you what goes on here in Harar, one of the most important cities in Islam. 
I've been a lot of places in Ethiopia and Harar just feels different. It almost feels like Morocco or something in North Africa or the Arab world. It's so different here and beautiful and Islamic. You know, Ethiopia is a cool country because you have so many different religions and cultures. It's like half Christian, half Islam, but Harar is truly something special. We're about to enter the old city of Harar, a UNESCO site. We have about 40,000 people with about nearly 4,000 houses and about 82 mosques and 368 alleyways. The old city dates back 1,400 years and still remains surrounded by thick walls. Look how narrow this alley is. It's like maybe two feet wide. We are lost in the neighborhoods here. Everyone's just kind of like poking their heads out, saying hi. I'm Philippines. <laughs> We're still on the mission to find the hyena man. We know he's around here somewhere. These streets are so erratic, it's easy to get lost. And believe it or not, the inside is filled with old Islamic arts and traditions. This is one of the 82 mosques in the old city here. It actually says on the sign number 17. The fourth holy city. Found behind what? After Mecca, Medina, Jerusalem, and Harar. We are now entering the busy market here of Harar. Lots of shops around here. The city is chaos. It's everything in your face all at once. Bring me back to my time around the Horn of Africa. I mean, all of this part of Africa feels somewhat like this. And the people almost look a little bit Somali too, which is cool. Walking next to this tin fence, which if you hit, you could probably puncture your skin pretty well. It's cool. Deanna's buying a local dress. You like it? Wait, I need to paint. Thank you. Yes, this is how <laughs> the girls are doing you up. Yeah. Oh, she's hugging you. One, two, three. Shukran. Good? Okay. As you can see behind me, Ethiopia is so rich in natural resources and grains and spices. Look at all these. Everything grows in Ethiopia. You know, Ethiopia is a, uh, we have more than 2,000 plants. Oh, sauce we made from here, the Harari people. What is this? The smallest seed from the crop. Ethiopians, the early fathers from the church, they found teff from the wild. They choose the teff for food. From all grasses, choose teff and make food. Look, you put this one seed and it become a lot of grass. Yeah, so only grow in Ethiopia island. We have found the chat market. For those who don't know, chat is a plant that grows in the ground here of Ethiopia, and it's a stimulant. It's really popular in Yemen and Somalia, but actually the main source of chat is Ethiopia. Ciao. Chat atimalam? Let's give you uh, more energy, you know? It's uh, make your flesh, you know? So you think like, you chat with the people. After you chew, you chat, chat, like a Facebook chew, chat. Chew, chat, huh? chat. How does it make you feel when you chew that? Just <laughs> Just uh, no. Happy. Good Happy. Huh? Happy. Happiness. Happiness. Many, you say, ideas. many yeah. ideas come. You know, many ideas. Yeah. <laughs> We're thinking. <laughs> so cool to see manual labor like this in today's day and age. It seriously makes you feel like you stepped in a time machine back in time. I just want to say that this city is so cool. It's amazing. It's full of life. Everyone's coming up to us and saying hi. You don't feel any hostility or any danger here. And it's just a beautiful life. I am loving Harar. This is the hardware section. Literally any tool that you can imagine is sold right here. Sometimes you can find your own things here. Like if you lose it? Yeah, they sell it back to you. The craziest thing is that everything is so rusty. But I guess it's still usable. I'm gonna take another. Just popped into a little restaurant here and getting a local Ethiopian lunch, which if you don't already know, it's the best cuisine in Africa. This is a plate of injera, which basically this sponge-like pancake, and it's kind of sour a little bit, and then you just throw a bunch of beef on top of it and vegetables, and you use your hands, and you just get in there, and you can eat this stuff. You eat the bread. <laughs> yeah. Injera is central to every meal in Ethiopia, almost like bread is to Italy or rice is to Korea. We love injera, you know? It's very healthy and it's made from the teff, you know? So teff is only grown in Ethiopia islands. You see the eyes of the injera. Yeah, it gives me yeah. the bitchy. So we call it thousand eye. <laughs> so this is how you eat injera. You basically just peel off a piece with your hands like this and you grab it, put some meat in it, dip it in a little bit of the spice, and then you eat. Mmm, there's nothing else like it in the world. The best cuisine in Africa. This is Coca-Cola in America right here. That says Coca-Cola. The language, as you can see here, is called Amharic. It's one of the oldest languages in the world and is only spoken in Ethiopia. Can you guess how we're going to wash down our delicious meal? If you think coffee, 
you are correct. We're popping into a little hole in the wall coffee shop here because coffee is the best in Ethiopia. Let's go get a cup. Ethiopia is thought to be the birthplace of coffee, even though the original coffee bean came from Yemen. You know, Harare coffee is very best coffee. Very creamy. Yeah, creamy and sweet. You're right. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. The coffee culture in Ethiopia is something that we are serving for the social gathering to invite each other. They can serve it three times a day. In the 1500s, coffee beans were transported over the Red Sea and the first growers, traders, and consumers of coffee were Ethiopian. I'm telling you guys that this beverage is really baked into the culture here and it's absolutely amazing. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's creamy, it's rich. It has that flavor of the mint from the tree. It's hard to explain how good this coffee is. It's so small, this is all you need, just a little shot. And the cool thing is like one little cup and you're done. It's that strong. Oh yeah. All right, feel nice and awake after that cup of coffee. Almost like a slap in the face. And now the journey continues. Babe, do you think we're gonna find the hyena man? I hope so. I'm excited. It is almost nighttime and the rain is starting to fall, but we still haven't found our hyena man yet. So we're gonna take a tuk tuk to the area where his house is to follow Abdul's lead. All right, so where are we going now? The hyena guy. To the hyena guy. Yes, I. We have arrived. Yep. The driver knows where he lives. Thank you. I'm gonna stick another. I'm exhausted. It's been a long journey. We've made it to the hyena man's house. Let's go meet him. Abbaso, what happened? You went to the field. Yeah, they are going to call him. Okay. I really hope to meet him before it dark. Behind me is his house, just on the hill. So he just sleeps here and wakes up to hyenas right outside his front door. How crazy is that? Finally, the hyena man has arrived. This is him. How are you? Nice to meet you, bro. I came from Arizona to see you. You say uh, very give thanks because you are coming to see me. You cross uh, many oceans, so he's very happy. I've heard a lot about you. I've seen videos. It's pretty impressive what you do. So how did you get inspired to feed hyenas? His father uh, did uh, like feeding hyena for 60 years, 60. Wow. His father did, but now he started. Uh, now he did uh, for uh, almost 23 years. Salam alaikum. This is the original hyena man from 60 years ago. Yeah. The first time you fed the hyena, were you scared that they were going to kill you? It's a little uh, fear, like little fear the first time. But after you get experience, but when you have uh, starting, you feel little afraid, little fear. Why are there so many hyenas here? Like why Harar? They build uh, these walls. Because of these walls, many hyenas are coming because of the people start to live here. So what uh, the hyenas uh, not eat the people. Uh, really? Not, yeah. Never they eat the people? Never eat people. So if someone sleep on the street, the hyenas not eat. Are you ever scared that you're going to get your hand eaten off or something's going to happen? He never once afraid. <coughs> and never the hyena like eating or biting his hands. Mm -hmm. Never. And he saw like uh, no fear on his heart, he said. Speaking of feeding the hyenas, I don't see any right now. So what time do they come out? You want to? Oh. You want to and say uh, 730 or 8. So in a Not few hours. Yeah, in a few, few hours. hours. And they come every night? Every night. Every night. What do you feed the hyenas? Meat. What kind of meat? Camel, cattles, like mostly and cattles. While hyenas are vicious and eat anything that comes in their way, including humans, Ethiopian hyenas are different. They are believed to be the keepers of evil spirits, and the natives of Harar have an unusual relationship with them, especially Yusuf and Abbas. They have a spiritual connection to the hyenas as protectors, and this friendship between human and animal is based on a level of trust you won't find anywhere else. All right, now we are going to the butcher to grab meat. This is his daily routine. Every day he goes to the same butcher and grabs meat to feed the hyenas, so we're following. We've arrived at the butcher where he comes every day to get the meat. Every day uh, you give like 300, 400 per you pay. No, 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 no. Not the fresh meat. Not the fresh one. The fresh one people they eat, you know, but the leftover for the hyenas. He gather from uh, many uh, like bushers, you know, not from only from one. Like more than uh, three or five he gather. Oh my God, it's a lot. Yeah. That was only one butcher, now we're going to another one to get more meat. This is wild, man. Wow. Wow. He's barely walking this. So heavy. We have bags and bags of raw meat. 
Oh my god. It's probably like 50 pounds each bag. That's a lot of meat, bro. That's a lot of meat. I thought he was done, but he's not. We're going to another butcher. Yo, yo! Got the meat. Yeah, yeah. Three bags. Yeah. Uh, another. Another? Yeah. How many more? One more. Good do. Yeah, one more. This city is awesome. It's madness. There's so much to look at. There's so many things happening around. Uh, Wow, there's more. How many hyenas are repeating? Another one. Yeah. Four meat shops. Yes. Camel. Camel meat. Yeah. Wow, it's a lot. It's a lot of meat. I think we cleared out all the butchers in town. How much money do you spend every day on meat? Uh, including with the tuk-tuk, uh, with the car, three thousand. Sixty dollars. Yeah, like that. Expensive. Yeah. So where do you get money from? You save some money for the meat. And you do this every single day, bro. Every day. Every day. Even if you're sick. Every single day. Yeah. We're back in the tuk tuk, going back to Abbas's house, and I am exhausted. I've been running around the city all day. I want to share a little personal note here. Just running butcher after butcher after butcher. I'm like dizzy. I think I need to drink more water. But what a journey. It's all a blur right now. We're racing to catch the clock before the hyenas come out and we start feeding them. This is crazy. All right, bro, I'm coming back later. Oh, bye. Bye. See you later, bro. We'll be back in the night. All right. All right, we are going to come back in a few hours when it's dark and when the hyenas are out. Oh, man, what a place. Oh, I'm dead. Quick nap time, and we're back. All right, after a great nap, we're heading back to meet Abbas okay. and his father and hopefully see the hyenas. You nervous? No. Hyenas are vicious. Where are they? <laughs> oh my god. Hello. It's crazy we are surrounded by wild hyenas right now. He keeps calling them in by this whistle sound. And slowly and surely they're creeping in. Borracho! Porto Ghana! He has names for all of them, so he's just chanting their names. All of the raw horse and camel meat that we gathered in the shops earlier is now ready to be served. Oh my god, this is wild. Oh my god, they're everywhere. If you listen closely, you can hear the hyenas howling and craving for blood. What you're about to witness is something that only exists by this man and his father in this part of Ethiopia. It is not recommended for anyone to try this at home under any circumstance. We must keep our full trust in Abbas that he will keep us safe around these vicious wild animals. Tell me about the, the connection that you have with these hyenas. Yeah, he said, I feel like I'm like their father. Yeah, sometimes I bring them even to my home, the family, he said. There's so many wild hyenas behind me right now. What? As I was sitting there watching Abbas, he asked me if I want to feed one of these creatures myself. Everything in my nature told me not to do it. Like standing on the edge of a cliff before bungee jumping off. But as I always say, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Pretty scared. Mouth to mouth. Well, this story has been absolutely insane. Feeding wild hyenas in Ethiopia. I never thought I would ever do this, especially from my mouth. I'm literally shaking that there's 15 wild hyena behind me just eating raw meat. What an experience. Wrapping up my time in Harar, Ethiopia, I can hardly believe the encounter I just had with the hyena man. 
In the darkness of night, I stood just inches away as he fearlessly fed these dangerous animals with their eyes gleaming in the moonlight. It took a lot of courage to take part in this bizarre ritual, offering raw meat from my own mouth to the hyena's intense jaws. But let this be a lesson that you should always step out of your comfort zone because that's when life's greatest moments happen and these are the stories to tell your grandkids. I hope you feel inspired by hearing the stories of Mr. Nungak, Sultan, Jyoti, Kelvin, and Abbas. Our world is full of amazing humans and I can't wait to share more stories in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and comment down below and let me know where you're watching from and I'll see you guys next week.